So one of the coolest things, in my opinion, about woodworking is the vast array of materials that we have available to us. Now that's kind of limited if you go buy your lumber at a hardware store or a lumber store. But if you're willing to tackle some of the breaking down of lumber, you can find amazing material that you just can't buy. And one of the cool things is, depending on where you are in the US, the type of material that you can save will vary. For example, down in the Southwest, you'll find a lot of uh, mesquite and the olive, maybe some eucalyptus, where here in the Midwest, we have a lot of kind of the traditional hardwoods, oak, walnut, cherry, and maple. And it doesn't mean that if you're saving logs, you have to hire a bandsaw mill to cut them for you. Now, of course, a bandsaw mill will be able to handle bigger logs and give you a better yield out of them. But if you have a bandsaw in your shop, you can take logs like this and cut them into usable material. Let me show you how. The first things first is I do want to talk a little bit about the log and a couple of things you want to keep in mind as you're selecting pieces to cut on your bandsaw. The first is you want the log to be uh, fairly straight. Uh, because these are going to be short pieces uh, and generally smaller diameter, big curves will yield a lot of waste. And we want to make sure that the logs are easy enough for you to lift. Uh, this is a black cherry log and it's oh probably 10 inches in diameter or so, probably weighs about 50 pounds. If this was oak, it would be closer to 100 pounds and it would be hard for me to lift up onto the saw. So just make sure it's within your capabilities to handle. Like I mentioned, we want it to be fairly straight and fairly defect free, uh, although some defects can be kind of cool depending on what you're looking to do with it. So rolling this log around, we have a little limb here that had broken off and started to heal over at some point, but that's something we need to keep in mind. Looking at this end, we have a little bit of rot in it, but I think it will be okay. Black cherry in Iowa almost always has a little bit of rot. And looking at this end, we're pretty clean and clear. We have a few small checks in here, uh, which isn't gonna go terribly far into the wood. And after I cut this into small boards, I may lop off those ends and reseal them with a commercial wood sealer. Uh, but we have to cut it first. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing to be aware of on your bandsaw is round objects like to roll. They especially like to roll when a bandsaw blade grabs it and starts cutting. So we need a way to keep this nice and flat and stable and safe as we cut it. So to do that, I always like to use a carrier board, just a piece of scrap plywood, uh, and we want it to be wider than the log is. Uh, and that's important, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is roll this around and position it to where what I think the flattest side of the log is up against the plywood. I think right about there will work. And I'm gonna put this in the vise and I'm gonna drop it down uh, about an inch or so. I want the plywood to be sticking off the edge of the log uh, by about an inch. I want a good straight reference edge to run along the fence. Okay, now I'm gonna mark where the log is touching this carrier board on both ends. And now I'm gonna attach the log to the carrier board using a couple of big screws. These happen to be like stainless steel leg screws or cabinet screws. Uh, I'm gonna recess the head just a little bit with the counterboard uh, hole so it doesn't rub on the bandsaw table but these guys are long enough that they're gonna give me good bite into the log and it's gonna hold it while I make that first initial cut. Okay, now we can release this out of the vise. And there we go, we have a nice solid base for this as we cut at the bandsaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the bench out of the way, bring the bandsaw in, and we'll talk about how I'm gonna cut this. So before we ever turn our bands on, there's a couple of things we need to decide on how we wanna cut our log. The first is gonna be the thickness of material that we want out of it. Now, if you don't have any plans for it, I generally uh, cut it a little thicker than I think I might need. So two inch stock is pretty standard for what I cut. Uh, that way it works really well for tops or for legs. Uh, but if you want a little bit thinner, four quarter or one inch stock works well also. 
Uh, just keep in mind that the thicker you cut it, the longer it's gonna take to dry. Uh, generally, the rule of thumb is one year per inch of thickness. So one inch thick stack will take about a year to dry. A two inch thick stack will take about two years to dry. Now, the other thing we need to think about is what type of boards we want out of our log. And what I mean by that is what is the grain pattern that we're going for? Now, most of us have heard of Coruscant, Plainsan, and Riffsan grain patterns. Now, that all is designated by the angle that the growth rings take to the faces of the board. So when you're looking at the end of a board, what degree is those rays running? So anything that has the grain in 90 degrees to 60 degrees is considered quarter sawn. Anything from about 60 degrees down to 45 degrees is considered riff sawn. And then some plain sawn or flat sawn boards, a lot of times will have those growth rings following the board uh, and you won't see any of that coming through. And that's where you get that kind of cathedral pattern. Now, the way I cut these, I generally end up with about a third of each. So it means I end up with about a third coarse on material, a third rifts on, and a third plain or flat on. Now we're gonna make two cuts initially on this. The first one we're gonna make is with this edge of this carrier board riding along the fence. That's gonna give us a cut along this edge and create a flat here. And what we're gonna do next is take that flat we just created, place it down on the table, and we're gonna make another cut with the carry board riding along the fence to give us a square edge here as well. So now with these two cuts made, I've removed the carry board and we're ready to square this up into what's called a cant. And to do that, it's exactly the same process that we just did, but without the carrier board. So we'll make a cut across here and a cut across here to remove the bark. Now I'm not gonna be terribly concerned if there's a little bit of bark left on uh, some of the edges. It's considered wane, which will actually knock these boards down a grade if they were getting graded, uh, but you can cut it off later. So I'm not terribly concerned about it. So I'm gonna make those cuts. And then the biggest thing is deciding what thickness we want and what orientation we want to cut this cant in. So generally what I will try to do with a defect like this uh, rot section here is I'll usually try to position it so that is uh, constrained into one board or as few of boards as possible. Uh, so with this guy, I will probably end up cutting these boards in this orientation. So I will have one, maybe two boards that have that rot patch in them. If we cut it the other way, it's going to show up in three or four boards. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. And it's not terribly uh, important as you're cutting stuff in your shop, but if it's something you are having cut on a bandsaw mill and you're paying for that time on the bandsaw mill, you do want to pay attention to that. So I'm going to go ahead and make these cuts and then I'm going to cut these boards. Okay, there we go. So that log, being a little cherry log, yielded six pretty nice boards. So let's take a look at uh, the different grain patterns we got just cutting them this way. So on this first board out here, we have the growth rings are kind of following the face of the board. That's going to give us that plain sawn or flat sawn look. So we look at this, we kind of have that traditional cathedral type pattern that we think of when we think of wood grain. And the next board, is very similar, but those cathedrals are starting to stretch out. So we're actually here starting to approach that rift sawn territory. And the next board is gonna be much more rift sawn until we get into the true quarter sawn where it's just straight lines, straight grain. And this is the stuff we really like for leg stock. Uh, it gives you nice clean lines. And then as we work through the board, we get back to that rifts on and plain sawn look with that cathedral type grain pattern. 
So cutting it this way really gives you a good mixture. We have a couple riffs on boards, a chorus on board, and some plain or flats on boards. Now when you're cutting stuff like this, it's going to be pretty rough, uh, depending on what type of blade you have in your bandsaw. Uh, this one cut pretty well. It's just a standard 3 8 inch wood blade. Uh, there are green wood blades that you could purchase for your bandsaw. And if you're going to be doing a lot of this, I would highly suggest it. They're going to be a little bit more coarse, uh, and they're going to just cut the wood more efficiently uh, than a blade like this, which has probably too many teeth for this soft, wet wood. So now, after we have these cut, we have the task of drying them. Uh, and as I'm feeling these, I feel they're very wet. There's a lot of moisture in here. And it doesn't matter how long the log has been on the ground, it's always going to be wet on the inside. It just will not dry in log form. I don't care if it sits there for a number of years, it will still be wet on the inside. So we have to dry these. So the best thing we can do now is stack these in an area of the shop uh, or outside that gets good airflow. Uh, because there's so much moisture in here and it's starting to come out of the wood, if it doesn't have good airflow, it's going to sit there and it's probably going to mold and mildew. So I like to stack these in an area with good airflow, put stickers every, I don't know, on something like this, probably every 18 inches. So I'll probably do three stickers on this, one on each end and then one in the center. Uh, and just three quarter by three quarter inch scrap uh, will space it out enough that you can dry it. But then comes the hard part and that's just waiting. Uh, so like I said, about a year per inch of thickness. These guys are about an inch and a quarter, so they'll probably take around 14, 16 months or so to dry fully. But it's a great way to give yourself some good lumber in your shop and lumber that you might not be able to buy in a store. So next time you drive by, see a tree taken down and you think, hey, Maybe I could save some of that and throw it on your bandsaw. You'd be surprised at the type of material that you get out.